In this video, I'll show you how you can convert .avi and .movs over to .mp4s. I think we've probably all experienced this where our stakeholders have asked us to include that really cool video from their company in the e-learning course that you're building for them, and they send it over in a different format, such as .avi or .mov. And uh, of course, Adobe Captivate works best when you give it MP4. So how do you convert these weird formats into MP4? Well, today I'll show you. Let's see what happens when I drag this .mov file over to my Captivate project. So you're going to see this AME conversion window appear. AME stands for Adobe Media Encoder. Now, one of the things that a lot of Adobe Captivate users don't actually pay attention to when they install Adobe Captivate, you also get Adobe Media Encoder uh, along with Captivate. So it's available to you. Now, this window will actually convert the file for you. If I click on yes, what you're going to see is you're going to see this progress indicator at the bottom here, and it's encoding video.mov into video.mp4 and when it's finished it's going to give me the option to import to slide and of course I can click go at this point here and we can choose either event video or slide video and click OK and of course there it is. The problem with this video if I go over and I right click on it and we find it in the library here we can see that this is still the same aspect ratio of the original recording. It's 1920 by 1080. This project is only 1024 by 627. This video is pretty large, and uh, I don't think it's necessary to use up 18 megabytes for this particular file here. Let me show you an alternative way to convert this file so that it's a little bit more optimized for your e-learning project. So I'm going to close this project down here. We're not going to save that and we'll just minimize Captivate at this point here. And I've got Adobe Media Encoder already running. I'm just going to open it up here. And we're going to take that original .mov file and drag it over to the queue here. Now this will take just a moment to set up but it automatically selects H.264 or MP4 as the format. MP4 is the container, H.264 is the format of video. Now, in this case here, it's not allowing me to make any changes. Well, it is if I go ahead and click and change this from one of the preset options that are available here. If I click on match source high bit rate, this window is going to open up. I'll just maximize that so it fills my screen here. And it makes all the choices for you. So we can go through the video settings. Usually the audio is fine, but we can go through the video settings and make new choices that might be more appropriate for this particular video. First thing is, of course, the resolution, the actual width and height of our video. Uh, it's basing these decisions off of the original video size, so 1920 by 1080. Uh, my Captivate project is 1024 by 627, so I don't need all that extra resolution. It's not going to be shown. So let's start off with the height of my Captivate project, 627, and I'll hit enter here. The width of the video is still too large at 1112. So I'm going to just type in 1024 and that will change the height to 576 in this case, but that's fine. This will fit on my slide. I'm not going to have to resize a much larger video and take up all that extra loading time for my learners. The other thing too, the original video was encoded at a rate of 10 megabits per second. Uh, which is fine if you're running a video off of a thumb drive or directly off of your computer. But if you're streaming this video over the network, whether it be the World Wide Web or whether it be your company network, uh, that's a lot of megabits per second uh, to expect if you're just using, you know, a basic internet connection. What I like to do is drop this down to about 1.5. 
that's usually going to cover most regular high-speed internet customers that are out there and we're good now so I'm gonna go ahead and click OK so in summary I've changed the default settings to a set of custom settings we've lowered the resolution of the video and we've reduced the bitrate of the video as well now we're ready to make a copy of this here so I'm gonna click on the start queue button which is the little green arrow in the upper right hand corner and it'll just take a moment this is a short video here and now it's done. So let's minimize Adobe Media Encoder. Let's go back to the original file, the .mov. We'll just click on Properties here and take a look what we started with. We had 5.64 megabytes. Now remember, when we did the original conversion that is built into Captivate, it actually came back at, what was it, 18 megabytes or something like that? It actually ended up larger than what we started with here. Here's the optimized video that I just created using Adobe Media Encoder on its own. 3.13 megabits, almost half the size of the original file. And of course, this will be a much more appropriate sized uh, project. If we go into details here, you can see it's 1024 by 576, which will easily fit on a default Captivate slide. This will run better for you when you're working on your project, but more importantly, this will run better for your learners when they're consuming your e-learning course. If you thought this video was helpful, please like and share it with your colleagues. If you need help with Adobe Captivate, hire Paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction. Paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific needs. Visit his website at CaptivateTeacher.com. And don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.